Hey guys, I'm Mike Carleo, and this is my fifth installment of my Guitar for Dummies series. And today, we're going to be talking about power chords. Now, power chords are probably the most popular chord you can make on the guitar. Almost every song that you pretty much listen to has power chords in them. And today, I really want to talk about how to make them correctly, how to make them sound very good, and how to use certain exercises and certain songs to work on them. So, let's get started. Power chords can be simply broken down into just two notes. The first note being the root, or the name of the chord, and the second note being the fifth. The great thing about guitar is that we only have to remember one shape. And the one shape can be played on the big E string or the A string, and it can be played all across the fretboard. So let's learn the shape of the power chord on the big E string. Let's take our first finger and put it on the fifth fret, and that's gonna act as our root. Let's take our third finger and put it on the A string on the seventh fret, which acts as our fifth of the chord. Now this is the complete power chord, but a very popular way of playing this chord is to double the root. So we're gonna take our pinky and put it down on the seventh fret of the D string. So it's gonna sound nice and full just like this. And you can play this wherever you want on the fretboard. A very important thing that I'm doing is I'm muting the top three strings of the guitar, the G, the B, and the little e. And the reason why I'm doing this is because there's only supposed to be three notes that are being played. And the way we can mute the top three strings is to roll our first finger to the side and just lightly touch the top of the strings. And the way to do that is only put pressure on the top of the finger where the root is and then gently lay it across. This is a great way of muting and it allows us because we're humans and we make mistakes a lot and it gives us a lot of headroom when we have a huge strum when we really get into a song. So so I can make a full strum without having to worry about the top three strings being heard. Now if I'm not muting this is what it's going to sound like. So much noise going on, it sounds very muddy. So you really want to roll your first finger to the side and lightly place them on the top strings. Now this is the big E string power chord. The A string power chord happens to be the same exact shape as the big E string power chord. Now all we need to do is take the shape and move it down one string. Now muting is the only thing that is different with this chord. We're still going to roll our first finger across the top two strings, so they're not heard. The problem is that we have the big E string which is open, which creates even more muddiness. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our second finger and lightly press it over the big E string so that's muted. So now we can still make full strums and not have that muddy sound. Now there's other ways of doing this as well. If you're not comfortable with using the middle finger, you can also push up your first finger a little bit and use your first finger to mute the top E string. I like using the middle finger because uh, it gives me a more natural way of pushing down on the strings like I was taught in the beginning. So I like using the middle finger. And this you can play across all the frets as well. So those are the two main shapes, the big E string and now the A string shapes. Now let's get to some exercises to learn how to make these sound better and to get more adept with them. An exercise I like to use to practice both the A string and the big E string power chords is what I call the power chord exercise, a very creative name for this exercise. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to place our, our power chord on the A string on the first fret, which is a very wide grip. And when you move up the fretboard, it becomes closer. So we're going to play the A string first on the first fret. And then we're going to jump up a string and play an F power chord on the first fret. And then from here, we're going to go down back to the A string, but move up two frets. And then move down to the big E string and play a G power chord. And we're going to keep doing this all the way up to the 11th fret. So 
So the most important thing I'm doing is muting and making sure that all the notes that are supposed to be heard ring out. And when I move to the A string power chords, my middle finger is always muting that big E string to make it not sound muddy. So we're gonna do it one more time. So we start on the A string, move up to the E string, go back to the A string, but move up two frets at a time. So once you can start doing that, you can now go backwards. You can start on the big E string, move to the A string, and then move down two frets to the big E string. So it's just the exact opposite. So you start on the big E string on the 11th fret, then go to the A string. So that is a very important exercise for us to learn how to move laterally across the fretboard and also make sure that we continue to mute. Now let's get to some songs that use the power chords. There are three songs that I teach to my students to work on their power chords. And the first tune I work on is called Boulevard of Broken Dreams by Green Day. And we're just going to work on the chorus right now. And the first starts out on the fourth fret of the A string playing a D flat chord. And then it moves down to an A flat chord, which is right above on the big E string. And the next chord is a E flat, which is two frets up back on the A string. And then I move up two frets again, but stay on the same string to the F power chord. I play that three times in a row. And the last time on the fourth time, I play a D flat, which is on the fourth fret, then an A flat. And then I go to a C power chord and I do four eighth notes and a quarter note. So it sounds just like this. the verses. So that's Boulevard of Broken Dreams. The next song I use is called Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana. Now this one's a little bit harder than Boulevard of Broken Dreams because of the fast tempo and also has some very very fast transitions. So I use, I start on an F power chord on the bottom E string and then I move to a B flat which is also on the first fret and then I move all the way to the third fret of the big E string. So I go up a string and I move right away from the third to the fourth fret, which is a G to A flat. And then I move down a, fret, uh, down a string to a D flat power chord. So I start out with a very simple strum and then I use the real one after they get used to the transitioning and also the strumming pattern to get into the groove. So it starts out just like this. So the most important thing to do is also mute the strings just like how we were doing before and also follow the exact strumming pattern. The strumming pattern will be in my next installment, but for right now we're going to worry about just the power chords. So once they get used to that simplified version, then I go to the more advanced version which includes scratching. So I'm going to play it now. The reason why I can scratch is because I have practiced the muting, the rolling, and then also my using my second finger on the big E string. And because I got so used to that, it makes learning how to scratch a lot easier and I can move to my chords just as fast as anyone else. So that smells like teen spirit. The last tune I teach to my students is called Hit Me With Your Best Shot. And the reason why I teach this last is because the movement goes both down the neck and up the neck as well as switching strings. And on top of it, it's at a very fast tempo. 
So the first chord we're going to play is an E power chord on the A string, which is on the seventh fret. The next chord is an A power chord, which is two frets below up to the big E string. And then I slide on the same string up to a C sharp, which is on the ninth fret. And then all the way down to a B power chord, which is two frets below on the same string. Move back to an E chord on the seventh fret, to an A chord again. And then I do C sharp, B, A, B. Now done at real speed. So with both parts being put together, it moves us down the neck and up the neck and we also switch strings. So that's Hit Me With Your Best Shot. So in this installment, I showed you what it takes to make a power chord sound very good and to make it sound very effortless. Using the power chord exercise, you'll be able to learn how to switch strings and also move up and down the fretboard. Now if you take it into context, learning Boulevard of Broken Dreams, Spells Like Teen Spirit, and Hit Me With Your Best Shot, you'll be able to get a great handle on how to play power chords within songs. Now if you want to get to learn about me more, you can check out my website below at michaelcarleo.com. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.